fighting to the death, even after life. Here's a look at new McFarlane Toys Warhammer 40,000 Dark Tide Traitor Guard. These brave, well-trained, and determined veterans are or were humans, conscript troops who were recruited to regiments and sent into the unknown with no idea of what they'd face. Most troopers served brilliantly and bravely, remaining loyal to their imperial duty despite everything they experience, but others fall prey to the insidious touch of chaos. <laughs> Now, just before we bring the war to our opponent's door, let me first go ahead and thank the folks over at McFarland Toys that did come through and provide this sample of the new Warhammer 40,000 Dark Tide Trader Guard. Not sure how I'm going to possibly fit that all in the title. I'll find a way that we're nice enough to provide the sample that we're about to have a look at. Solely bringing in the tape measure, not to startle anybody that's watching this really close. I'd like to think you're not probably going to be watching this too close to a monitor screen. That's going to damage your eyes. Anyways, clickety-click right to the very top of the Trader Guard's head. Now, I'm going past the point of the helmet because there's that little tuft of hair at the top there. It's not really hair, it's part of the helmet. Either way, though, the figure counting that stands impressively at six and a half inches in height, or the figure's 17 centimeters tall. Not much to report from the accessory front, as the Trader Guard only comes included with a display stand and his Lays gun. I think that's the name of it. You can correct me if I'm wrong down below. Starting first, though, to this side of the figure's body, the figure comes included with the same standard black stand. Though what's different done down below here is that the printed in Warhammer 40,000 sizzled in there. Neighboring off to that, you can see there's one singular peg that can plug into either one of the feet there of the Trader Guard. Decide, choose wisely, because you only really have one peg on the stand, and you have two peg holes. You can't have it both ways. We're going to move that to the side. The figure also comes in clue with what I believe to be the Lays gun. They've had various different guns, so it would be hard to kind of pinpoint exactly the name of this one. It's got a two-tone effect, though. That's one thing I can certainly easily describe to you. The front half of the gun looks like it's been painted in silver. The back end looks like it's been left behind with only just the molded black plastic to get it by. It's a nicely detailed looking gun. I would have liked if they could have added a little bit of coloring here on the end. I mean, that's, that's such a small thing. But one thing that's good, though, about the gun is it does fit well in the hands. Now, either one of the hands currently are gripping, so either, either would suffice to actually hold the gun. But what I have noticed, though, about the guard is that if you look at this one hand here, he does actually have a trigger-firing dedicated finger. The other hand, though, literally, on the other hand, has a wider grip. It's best advised only by the person behind the camera that if you take the handle of the gun, you can actually get it where the, the finger, the finger is actually lined up somewhat to the trigger. You sort of have to, let me just bring the finger up just a little bit here. It wasn't giving me certainly problems before. And now, of course, the camera's rolling. Get it in there. And then once that's lined up, then you can take the broader hand of the two and you can bring the gun around. And then providing, of course, you get everything lined up here, you can actually get then the other hand, literally on the other hand, holding the understock of the gun. I'm sure that's likely the way they've, they've designed the figure. And I'm going to follow suit to that because, again, like you've got the trigger firing. Let me just, I've certainly just made a mess of this on the side. But again, you get the idea. Love the look of that. Really think it's a neat looking gun. Yeah, they probably could have used a little bit of extra paint, a little bit of wear, a little bit of tear. But for the most part, it's a neat looking gun. All that talk, and I'm only just going to put it to the side anyways. The figure does have some really nice, interesting also details added here. Some pockets there on the front. I know and we kind of skipped the head. There's a reasoning for that moment. In a, in a moment, you'll find out why. But he has all these neat little, little pockets. They're all almost done in kind of a chocolate brown color. It matches that to the belt. But why I actually took a beeline away from the face is because he has all these other frag grenades. Uh, the reason why I talk about this first is that while additionally to the Lays gun, I kind of wish that they could have included a couple of standalone frag grenades, something that the figure could have held in his hand. Just a small thing. Now we can actually go and talk about the head sculpt here, which actually I really like. The paint is a little on the pasty side, but I got to say, like, I really like the way they've given lifeless eyes here. Not only does the trader guard have barren sockets for eyes, but it's also missing a nose. You can also see there as well. Things, details, you would certainly overlook by the fact the helmet's in the way. If we just peel away like curtains, you can see that they've actually sculpted a fully finished face. There's nothing about it that feels left off. 
The paint, I think, is a little too pale, but I do like the way they've handled the coloring, the darker colors around the eyes, and certainly in the nasal cavity, not to mention the missing lips as well. There's a lot of things missing on this guy's, this poor man's face. Really was really nicely handled, though, for McFarlane's team. Then on top of that, you've got a helmet. Now, the helmet isn't removable. If you wanted to peel this away, you'd only really be able to peel away the curtains. You'd not be able to take the top of this off. It has all these neat spikes. Now, you'll be happy to know at least that the spikes are softer plastic. You're not going to be poking anybody in the eye. I still would debate that because even if you have softer plastic, if you're running and you're running and you just happen to have a trader guard in your hand, let's just say that for a scenario, and you have to fall forward on it, soft plastic or not, I'm sure you'd still puncture or damage your eye at least from that. There's no real paint on the helmet, nor is there anything anything to the little bit of extra hair that's along the top. Now, this is actually part of the helmet. It's not part of the hair. We don't want to think that the skeletal face does actually have a little ponytail peeking out the top of the helmet. That's not the case. It's not the case. It seems, at least for me, that first of all, this is softer plastic. It doesn't rotate and there's no articulation here. So whatever rotating you're doing right now, I think is only starting just to wear away the plastic. So just don't do what I'm doing right now, because I think that's eventually going to tear the plastic right off. The plastic is fairly soft, but not something that's going to be damaged unless you're just doing what I'm doing right now. Don't do what I'm doing right now. That certainly goes for the rest of the armor. A few short of a few little details that they've painted on the front of the armor here. He's kept very barren and basic when it comes to the plastic. There's a few little chains that they've sculpted here to the side of his shoulders, which again also are making use of uh, the, the softer rubbery plastic. I suppose there probably could have been an opportunity that they could have gone in there and dry brushed a little bit of silver. Not everywhere, because that would get too busy. But I think at some of the key pivotal places, like for example, the shoulder, for example, they probably could have dry brushed a little bit of silver. Maybe just a little bit on the helmet. But again, I don't want to put too much on there because I think it would ruin the black. It does also have spikes. I mean, basically what I'd be describing is spikes that he's, he's got all over his body. He's got spikes all over his gauntlet. He's also got here on the other side as well. Again, like the paint is about the only thing that is under-delivered a little bit here on this figure. Maybe a little bit of silver here in the spikes, a little bit of silver here in the spikes. I think the running trend you're getting here from the person behind the camera is that anything that has spikes, it would have been nice if they just added a little bit of silver to that. But other than that, I just think it's a really neat looking figure. The grenade, as you can see, he's got one of them right here. All the other ones are actually holstered here on the back of his belt. But he's got this one lone frag grenade that when you are rotating the figure, luckily it's not so bad when you get to here. But when you're bringing the figure back, it's always going to be clipping, it seems, with the other frag grenades. And I don't know too much about frag grenades, but I want to think that friction is not something that's going to be your best friend. Any bit of rotating back and forth, if these things are getting close in contact with one another, you'd hate to think what damage it's going to be doing. But other than the articulation that we'll talk more about in a moment, again, it's a nice looking figure. Like the lower half of him is clearly more of a shinier black plastic than what he has further up. His shoulders, his arms, and his gauntlets and his forearms match the same more matte black that he has for the upper torso of his body, while the lower legs very obviously look a little more shinier and almost even a darker black than what they use for the rest of the body. Again, the boots are nicely done, but I think there's also opportunity there that's missed, unfortunately, by not simply just painting in the buckles or adding a little bit of something extra, even just adding a little bit of dirt on the undersoles or a little bit of dirt here on the top, just a little bit of brown would have gone a long way. For the articulation here, though, uh, we're going to start first with the Trader Guard's head. The head is on a ball joint. You'll be happy to know as well it doesn't have any limitations when it comes to rotating either. You can rotate it all the way around. You can have it looking down and looking up. That's about as far as far back as you can get it. And it also can rock back and forth as well. As for the shoulders, the shoulders are going to be something that's a little bit more limited. What they've done with the shoulder pads is they, they haven't attached them here, but they've attached them rather here. And because it's softer plastic way they've hinged it, you can get almost a 90 degree angle bend. Stressing it beyond the point of what you think is imaginable, you probably could pull off a 90 degree angle bend. It looks like he's awkwardly trying to sit inside of a, like a very heavy winter suit. Anyways, you can take the, all those arms, you can rotate them, yes, all the way around. The figure does have a bicep swivel, which is actually, it seems a lot higher up than what I'm normally used to seeing with figures. Still, though, the figure does have a double hinge on the elbow. Actually, it's only a single hinge. Correct me. I'm sorry. I'm correcting myself there. You can also rotate the hand all the way around. Now, the figure has an upper torso ball joint. Now, again, when it comes to rotating the torso, you are going to be kind of clipping this one lone frag grenade against everything that meets along the way. It's meeting all its neighbors. Hello. How are you? Oh, you have the paper for today? I never got one. Anyways, you can rotate the figure's body all the way around. In addition to that, the figure also has a secondary ball joint right at the base of the abdomen, just concealed behind the belt. 
The legs do split, although they're a little bit more limited just because you've got the skirting here on the top kind of holding things at bay. You can take the legs and move them forward, but only by just a little bit. You can also move them back, but again, only just by a little bit. There's a swivel at the top of the thigh, more the way it's been assembled. There is, in this case, a double hinge on the knee, unlike the single hinge only found in the elbow. And then there's articulation in the boot, both up and down this way, and back and forth this way. And would you believe... Come in here for a second. I'm only going to whisper this to you. Would you believe there's also toe articulation as well? Shh, don't tell anybody. It's just between you and me. No, seriously, it's for anybody that's really listening. He does also have toe articulation as well. It's a little tighter, but he does have it there present. Overall, it's a nice looking figure. Even if you're not a fan or just don't know and follow the exploits of Warhammer Dark Tide, I think it's just a neat looking figure. If you like a skeletal figure dressed up in military gear with spikes all over his body, this checks off all of those boxes. Granted, he doesn't have much in the way of accessories. I mean, he really only has just the laser gun. Somebody's probably going to tell me down below exactly what the name of the gun is. And he only comes in clear with the display stand. Maybe a frag grenade would also have been nice instead, instead of actually just attaching one to the side bandolier. Something he could have carried around with him would have also been a nice touch. But overall, a really neat looking figure with the Trader Guard. As they would say, McFarlane Toys is all in when it comes to the new Warhammer 40,000 Dark Tide, releasing several different characters in several different variations, many of which we will be looking at here on this channel, thanks to the folks over at McFarlane Toys. But we want to start things backtracking a bit to look at the Trader Guard. Trader Guard, actually, even on his own, is also getting released as an artist proof which is kind of a neat thing because they would have done that similar to when you would have bought a lot of the older Warhammer things back in the day. I think even to this day still, when you're building your Warhammer, you get the opportunity to paint them, but then left behind if you don't touch anything to it. It's kind of just a barren gray plastic or black plastic, or whatever the molding would have been cast in. They've also done very something similar with the Dark Tide figures. Now, we are going to be looking at the Artist Proof version of this figure in a standalone review, so that's certainly something you guys would like to see. Then make sure you're staying on board this channel. When it comes to certainly the colorized version, because we don't want to get too ahead of ourselves here, I really like the look of this one quite a lot. Now, I might be a little bit more biased, simply just because I also like skeletal characters. But the idea of taking a skeletal character and then putting him in spiky military armor, and then giving him a gun, even if you don't follow the exploits of Warhammer at all, you gotta admit, it's still a pretty neat design character. One of which that I might even consider picking up a couple of these. Down, down the rabbit hole I go. But either way, though, I'd like to thank the folks over at McFarlane Toys that did provide this sample of the brand new Warhammer 40,000 Dark Tide Trader Guard. How am I ever going to possibly fit that all in the title? I'm going to have to do a little bit of word maneuvering. But definitely want to thank them for providing the sample that we had a look in this review. What do you guys think of the figure? Let me know down below in the comments section. Is this a line that you would like to collect? And even a bigger question, do you guys ever play Warhammer? That's also something I'll let, throw that out to you. You guys can catch it if you want. If you enjoyed this video, want to hit it with a like. If you're loving the content you guys are seeing and certainly do want to stick around for more, then make sure, if you haven't already done so, that you're hitting the subscribe button down below and turning on the ever-crucial bell notification. As I've already certainly alluded to, we are going to be looking at some future Warhammer 40,000 Dark Tide figures, thanks to the folks over at McFarlane Toys. So there's definitely going to be a lot more of these coming your way. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.